On-the-job accidents and deaths become even more tragic when you realize that they could have been prevented. Such is the case with the misuse of pipe plugs. Take the case of Manuel Pimentel. When a water main broke and flooded an 8-inch sewer line, it needed to be blocked. The contracting firm doing the job had an 8-inch pipe plug, which required a maximum inflation pressure of 30 PSI. Unfortunately, they failed to take the time to safely inflate it. Instead, they used a trailer-mounted 175 CFM 200 PSI air compressor, but failed to regulate the air pressure. Manuel was sent into the line and held the plug in place while air was pumped in from above using the unregulated air source. The first inflation didn't stop the sewer flow. Manuel asked for another shot of air. Boom, the plug exploded in his face. Now the photos you're about to see are graphic, but depict the pain and suffering that can result from misuse of a plug. 13 operations in eight years later, Manuel's scars are still very prominent. Had Manuel simply used a regulated air source, or better yet, blocked the plug and inflated it from street level using an inflation hose, he never would have been injured. Manuel's life has changed forever. I guess you could say he was one of the lucky ones. He's still alive. Unlike the contractor in Tampa, Florida, who was using two 42-inch plugs to isolate pipe between two retaining ponds. To put the line back in service after the pipe was repaired, the contractor put on a snorkel and dove three feet to open the plug's bypass. But the plug deflated and sucked him into the pipe, drowning him. He made the fatal mistake of placing himself in the danger zone while the plug was in use. These tragic accidents were 100% avoidable. Proper usage and understanding of equipment and job conditions are vital to your safety. Safety should always be your first concern on any job site. During the past decade, our industry has learned that many accidents can be avoided. For example, by properly shoring a trench on a job site or taking the necessary precautions for confined space entry, you can make the workplace safer. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, and NUCA, the National Utility Contractors Association, have specific guidelines for shoring a ditch, monitoring atmosphere, and using confined space equipment. But what about the safe use of, of pipe plugs and sewer testing equipment? There are no government or industry regulations in this area. That's why, as an industry leader, Cherney Industries is heading a campaign for greater education, awareness, and safety. Cherney sets the standard for high-quality, reliable pipe plugs. And although these products are built with safety in mind, they're only as safe as the person using them. In order to practice safe plug usage at all times, it's essential pipe plug users take the time to learn the proper procedures. Workers depend on supervisors to communicate the dangers of using a plug and on manufacturers to design and produce safe equipment. When renting equipment, it's the responsibility of the distributor to supply defect-free products that are in proper working condition. As you can see, everyone has a hand in maintaining a safe working environment. With innovative engineers experienced in plug design, Cherney offers a comprehensive line of pipe testing products. Every Cherney product is built to meet our stringent quality and performance standards, resulting in the safest and most reliable pipe testing products available today. Each and every plug is tested prior to shipping. If it says Cherney on the label, it has quality built in. Taking advantage of that quality requires end users be prepared when using pipe plugs and testing equipment. Many utility contractors have horror stories about plugs dislodging during a sewer air test, and city workers can cite examples of the consequences of pipe plugs exploding due to overinflation or puncture. It's easy to underestimate the effects of pressure. That happened in 1995 in Henrietta, Oklahoma, when a contractor conducted an air test on a 42-inch line at 4.5 PSI. A simple enough test, yet he tired of waiting for the test pressure to evacuate and entered a 15-foot deep manhole to remove the plug. As he deflated the plug, it dislodged, launching him out of the manhole. He broke his neck and died. Could this have been prevented? Yes. But how do you know what's behind that plug? 
Remember that the total force exerted on a pipeline plug is directly proportional to both the pressure and the pipeline area. So even though 4 PSI sounds like low pressure, once you define the square inches, the amount of force behind the plug is overwhelming. To better understand the hidden dangers you may be faced with, let's break down what happens when a plug is used to hold back pressure. The formula for calculating pipeline forces and pressures is force equals pipeline area times pressure. Consider the following examples. An 8-inch plug used in a 4 PSI test is subjected to over 250 pounds of force. The same 4 PSI test in a 48-inch diameter pipe is restraining over 7,200 pounds of force. Standing in front of a plug during this air test would be like standing in front of a loaded cannon with a lit fuse. A plug deflated before the back pressure is released can cause serious injury and even death. A plug should never be deflated while back pressure is still in the line. More importantly, a plug should always be deflated remotely using an extension hose. Never, never, ever deflate a plug within the danger zone. The force of that plug is equivalent to a missile shooting straight at you. When the force of a plug dislodging under back pressure has been known to knock over heavy machinery, it's obvious that you don't stand a chance. In Arlington, Texas, a contractor was finishing up the installation of 18-inch sewer pipe. To test the line, the contractor followed the sewer air pressure test procedure outlined in ASTM F1417, a 3.5 PSI test. The line passed, and all that was left to finish the job was to dismantle the test equipment and remove the test plugs. Unfortunately, a malfunctioning gauge indicated that the test pressure had been exhausted when in actuality it hadn't. Thinking the back pressure was exhausted, the job foreman sent an inexperienced 18-year-old to remove the back plug. But the plug did not have an inflation hose attached. The manhole was shallow and he climbed down and began deflating the plug. By now, I'm sure you can guess what happened. The plug blasted out of the line and thrust the worker against the manhole. 24 hours later, he was dead, having suffered from fatal head injuries. If these kinds of accidents are going to be stopped, you are a major part of the equation. Proper use of confined space equipment, remote inflation hoses, regulated air sources, plug blocking devices, and an understanding of inherent hazards can prevent injury and death. Over the past few years, safety in a confined space has been outlined for the industry. Ventilating, monitoring for gases, and using proper confined space entry equipment is critical. Never enter a confined space without knowing that it's safe and using proper confined space equipment. OSHA Regulation 29 CFR 1910.146 covers safe procedures for confined space entry. It requires that a competent, trained person be responsible for making sure that all workers on the job site comply with these regulations, as well as completing and posting the confined space permit. Following these regulations can save your life. In the 1980s in Brownsville, Texas, several workers found out that what you can't see and smell can kill you. While working without confined space equipment, a sewer worker deflated a pipe plug in a wet well and methane gas entered the well. The worker was overcome. A second worker entered the well to get his partner and unaware of the deadly atmosphere passed out. The job foreman then entered the structure, also succumbing to the gas. They were all removed from the wet well. Two died, one suffered permanent brain damage. In this case, injury was not a result of plug misuse, but rather a disregard for following OSHA confined space procedures. Since the 1980s, the industry has gotten smarter about confined space procedure, but lives are only saved if the procedures are followed. Whether you're using a plug to block flow for maintenance or testing a new line, please remember to consult OSHA confined space regulations, Cherney's safety instruction manual, and any ASTM specifications for guidelines and regulations regarding your specific job. 
Safety tags and safety instruction manuals are provided with each plug that leaves our factory. Please contact us at one of the numbers shown on the screen to obtain additional tags, safety manuals, or to discuss safety issues concerning your specific applications. Remember, death or serious bodily injury can happen if a plug fails for any reason. You must read and understand the safety instruction manual before using a plug. You must wear safety glasses and a hard hat. Never, never, ever enter the danger zone when a plug is in use. Always inspect a plug for damage before and after each use. Never use a plug in a pipe size different from the recommended usage range. Always attach an inflation extension hose to the plug so it can be inflated and deflated outside of the danger zone. Always inflate the plug to the proper pressure. Always use pressure gauges that are in good working order. Never exceed recommended maximum allowable back pressures. Always make sure back pressure has been released before deflating the plug. Following these simple steps and taking the time to do the procedure correctly can make the difference between life and death. Make sure that you and everyone on your crew are familiar with the hazards as well as the preventive measures necessary when working with pipe plugs. It's well worth your time.